Drug administration is one of the most important and dangerous duties for health pro uh, personnel. Patient condition can worsen or patient can die if medication are not given properly. We finish with vital signs and then we finish with pain assessment. They are very important. But one of the most important aspects of our practice is drug administration. If you're able to clock a patient, do everything on the patient, and you don't prescribe the right medication, you've done nothing. You've done nothing. So if you're a doctor and you don't know how to calculate the dose of a drug you're giving to a patient, you are nothing. Do you understand? So this part is the most important part in our career. So we must take it serious, especially when it comes to administering it. There are various ways of administering a drug for our patients. No nurse in Ghana will, will do that for you. If you don't know how to do it, you must learn it here before you get there. I don't know about other countries. So what we are coming to do here purposely is how to administer a drug through the vein in tribunal drug administration. And then we will allow some people to practice it. At least even if you don't know how you don't get to know how to do it, and then you see it how it is done. It's the first step of knowing how to do it. So let's all cooperate so that at the end of the day we can at least get something out of it. So to administer drugs safely and effectively, one must know the, and understand the basic principles of drug administration and principles of pharmacology. As doctors, every drug that we are giving to a patient, we must know the side effect, the desirable effect, the pharmacokinetics and the pharmacodynamics of the drug. A nurse can administer a drug without knowing the pharmacology aspect of it. It's okay. But you, the doctor, you, you must know more than that. Know how to administer and then know the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of it. And that one is going to be taught in class, not here. But here, our main concern is how to push the drug in. Because that is, that one we are not going to be taught in classroom. Nobody will teach you in class. You must find your way of knowing it. That is what we are coming to do here. So the first question I want to ask is, why do we take medication? Why is it important for us to take a drug? We take drug for three main purposes. The first is to diagnose, the second is to treat, and the third is to prevent the illness. So if you are taking the drug and the drug, the aim of taking the drug is not under any of these three, then what are you doing? Drug abuse. Simple. If you are taking a drug, and you think the drug is not going to diagnose you. For instance, if I give you an injection like um, PPD, purified protein derivative, that we use to diagnose TB for tuberculin skin test. We inject the drug and then we look out for the reaction that's going to occur at the site of injection for us to diagnose whether the patient has TB or not. So that one is basically for diagnostic purposes for at least in that drug, do we understand? So not all the time that we are giving a drug to kill a patient or to prevent a disease, but also to diagnose. And then the next one is to treat. So we give a drug to treat someone has malaria and you prescribe quinine, the patient takes it and then the disease is gone. And the next one is to prevent. Prevention, we take drugs like um, vaccines. 
We don't take the vaccine to prevent a disease, to, to, to cure a disease, but rather to prevent it. And then some plus like, maybe when we are moving into an endemic area where a disease is prone over there, you are advised to take um, some medication to prevent yourself so that when you get there, you don't get the disease, not that you already have it and you're taking the drug. So if you're taking drug and then your aim does not fall under any of these three, then it means that you are abusing the drug. It's not the right to be. So as a doctor, when you are prescribing a drug, make sure that either your drug is going to diagnose or it is going to treat or to prevent illness in your patient. So let's look at the basic principles of drug administration. We have the root of administration, dosage calculation, drug preparation, rights of drug administration, and then the drug administration itself. You will look at all this and then we know what it is. The first one is the root of administration. We have oral, we all know oral medication. We have sublingual, where you put the drug under your tongue. And then we have book you put a drug in your mouth against your um, mucous membrane in your mouth. And then parenteral. Parenteral means outside oral. So any means of abusing the drug outside oral is parenteral. But when we talk about parenteral, Subcutaneous and then intravenous. That is what we always um, mean when we talk about parenteral. Intramuscular into the muscle, either the dental muscle or the gluteus muscle or vastus lateralis, anywhere that is possible for us to give intramuscular injection. And then subcutaneous between the skin and then the muscle, the fat there. So that is why we give the subcutaneous drug. And mostly the vaccines that we give. We give them at this area, the subcutaneous region. And also, those diabetic patients that take insulin injection, when you, are in, when you are giving an insulin shot, we are giving it at the. Sorry. We are giving it at the. Subcutaneous region. And then intravenous. Intravenous means getting access into the vein and then introducing the drug. We have intradermal in the dermis. We have intraosseous into the bone marrow. We have it intrathecal, that's the spine. We have epidural into the epidural surface, into the epidural space or subarachnoid space. And then inhalation. Inhalation normally for anesthetic purposes. You inhale, you inhale the drug and then it gives a general effect. And sometimes to fall. Those people who have concentration of their bron uh, bronchioles, we give sabutamol or ventolin to dilate their bronchioles so that they can be able to breathe well. And then we also have nasal. When you have nasal congestions, you can put some preparation in your nose and then you are relieved. Rectal into the anus. The kids, we give them suppository when they are feeling feverish. So, and then we have vaginal installation. Vaginal installation whereby I store the women. When they have vaginal infections, they are prescribed some gas where they can put there so that they so vaginal installation normally deals with local infection or when we are want, when we want to relieve local symptoms in the, around the vagina. That is where we go for vagina installation. And sometimes too, when a pregnant woman is at them or is in labor and then the child is not able to come and we want the child to come at that time, we can give some drug, we, we give side to take normally. The, the drug that they use for abortion. You can give it through the vagina, you push it to the cervix, and then it can cause the cervix to ripen, and then it opens, and then the baby comes out twice. So we use the vagina installation method to, to cause the baby to come at that time. So these are the various means or routes where drugs are being administered to our patient. But today we are going to focus mainly on the intravenous. <coughs> So now, our first part of presentation is about to begin. The doses calculation. So when we are calculating for a drug, sometimes you go to a hospital and then a doctor writes a prescription for you. Take paracetamol, 1,000 
and gram or 500 milligram or maybe 250 milligram. You ask yourself, why is it 250? Why is it 750? Why is it this? And then it starts to confuse us. So today we're going to know how they come about the figure or the number that they write for us or how we come about those figures that we write for them. So there is one method here, desired dose over dose on hand times quantity of dose on hand. So let's say a physician, you're a physician and you've prescribed 10 grains of aspirin. And then the drug aspirin itself, suppose it is an aspirin I'm holding, I want to give an aspirin to this patient. This aspirin comes in 5 grains, but then I want to give 10 to the patient. So how many grains am I supposed to give? Please do you understand? I'm saying I want to give aspirin to this patient. After diagnosing him, I think aspirin is best for him to treat his condition. So I want to give aspirin. And then the aspirin that comes from the manufacturers are in five grains, so five milligrams. But I, I want to give ten milligrams to him. So how many, how many pieces of aspirin am I going to give? Two should be two and three times three. Okay. So let's go on and see this one too. A physician has ordered ampicillin, thousand
then every piece of the drug is 10 milligram. And then I want to give like 100 milligram. So you know how the population goes. If each kilogram is 10, and then each drug comes in, let's say 10 kilograms, then I want to give 100. You know how it will go. It's the same scenario as I, my, my brother says 700. So that is one way of calculating the drug. And this one is also another way of calculating the dose and the dosage of drug we give to our patients. So let's go on and see something here. A doctor orders 500 mg of ampicillin. You have 250. Okay, then this one shows how we arrived at the first scenario. So let's go on to the next one. Okay, so this one is also one of the most important things we need to know. How to convert grams to milligrams because most, some of the grams, some of the drugs, they come in grams. Some also comes in milligrams. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So we should know when we are converting a gram to a milligram, and then we are converting a milligram to gram. Because most of the drug, the drugs, if they are not in grams, then they are in milligrams. So how do we convert 25 grams to milligrams? Who by can tell us? By multiplying into thousands. So 25 grams to milligrams would be what? 25,000 milligrams. Good. Good. So that's the answer. 25,000 milligrams. So let's calculate this by ourselves. Calculate the dose to give for 500 milligram augmented. Here, what we are looking for is the males. Look at this drug. Augmenting is a penicillin group of drugs. Supposing we are using this drug to cure our patient, and then we took the leaflet. And then when we took the leaflet, the leaflet says that for every 125 milligram of augmenting, we mix with five mils of normal saline or water for injection. So, if we are to give 500 milligram of this drug to our patient, it means that how many mils? Because this drug will come in like powdered form. I have one here I'll show you us. It will come in like in a powdered form. Like this. And then you see the leaflet, 125 milligram over 5 mil. It means that when you take a drug like this, which is, this is not augmenting, I'm just using it as an example. If this is an augmenting, it means that if I want to mix this drug, I need to add 5 mils of normal saline or water for injection to make this, to prepare this drug to give to a patient. And now I want to give, and this drug is 250, 125, don't forget, 125 milligram. I want to give 500 milligrams for a patient. So how many mils am I supposed to give? That's the question. You are going to give 20 mils. The answer is there. I'm going to reframe it. If I'm supposed to give 400 milligrams augmented for my patient, how many mils am I going to give? Do you understand the question? The drug, this is a drug, augmenting. For every 125 milligrams of augmenting, we mix 5 mils of water to it to prepare the drug before we administer intravenously. Now, I want to give 400 milligrams for my patients. So how many mils am I going to give? 60 mils. Is it 60? Sure. Yeah. How did you come by the 16? So let's all do it together. If 125 uh, milligrams is being diluted by 5 mils, it means that if we have 250 of this drug, 250 milligrams of this drug, we are going to have how many mils? 10 mils. 
Right? So 250 plus 125 is going to be what? 250 plus 125. 375. So if you have 375 milligrams of the drug, how many mils? 15 mils that we are supposed to add. And now we want 400 milligrams. So how many mils are we going to add to get the 400 milligrams? Hmm? If someone has a calculator, he can calculate for us. What? What point two? Three point two. Sixty ml. Okay. So that is how we calculate. We are going to demonstrate it here. How we 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 we, we draw a drug. We mix it, we prepare it, and we give to a patient. Because most of the drug will come in in the powder form like this. And it's up to you to add the water for injection to it. The number of mils to add is up to you to calculate it. And then you mix it, you withdraw it, and then you give to the patient. So we will get there, and then we know how to prepare it. Okay, so let's go on. Part of a medication order. Whenever you are giving a drug to a patient, these are the steps that you must follow. The full name of the patient, date and time you are giving the drug, name of the drug to be administered, the dosage, frequency of administration, whether the drug is going to be given once, twice, thrice, or QID, four times. And then the route of administration, whether you are going to give the drug oral, IV, IM, and then the signature of the person writing the order. So if you are you the one administering, you have to write your name or sign. And if, if the one who prescribed the drug, if you are the one who prescribed the drug to you, you have to write your name and then you sign. And then we have some types of medication on this. We have start order. When you say when you write a prescription and then you write start to it, what does it mean? It means that that drug you are written must be taken immediately and once. Normally that is how doctors write prescription. If you do, if you want your patient to take the drug just now and then once, then you add start to it. If it is single order, it means the drug must be take uh, must be taken once. But not necessarily immediately. If you write standing order, it means the drug must be taken regularly until another prescription is written to cancel that order. The drug is going to be given in that order regularly. When you say PRA, you give the drug only when it is necessary. When it's not necessary, you're not supposed to give the drug. You just have to give it. And then, apart from this, we have the basic ones like daily. We have BID that we take it twice a day. We have TID, we take it three times a day, morning, afternoon, and evening. We have QID, we take it four times in a day. So, after this, then we go to the practical aspect of it. We have some rights that we must follow whenever we are giving a drug to a patient. The first right is the right medication. So whenever you are giving a drug, Ensure that this is exactly just look at the drug, identify the name of the drug to confirm that exactly this is the drug you want to give. The second one is the right dose. If you are not sure of the dose you have calculated, if you can let your friend help you to calculate the dose well. The third one is the right time. Is it the right time to give you the drug? Is it is the right if the drug is daily and then somebody has already given the drug? Am I supposed to give again? So check the time you are giving the drug, if it's the right time or not. The next one is the right route. You can't give an oral drug intravenously. Or you can't give rectal drug orally. So you, you must know where the drug must be given, the route. The next one is the right client or the right patient. So you must make sure that this patient is the one who is supposed to take this drug. Because at the world we have several patients there. And you, mistakenly you can take some of this drug and then give to someone. And that can be deadly. So you must be sure that this drug I'm giving is exactly for this person or for this patient. Then write to refuse drug. If the patient tells you 
I don't want to give, I don't want to receive this drug. You have you must respect the patients and then you stop. Don't give the drug. Right assessment. You must assess the patient before you give the drug. Some of the drugs when you are giving, you must ask the, the uh, you must check the temperature, the pulse and respiration before you give the drug. If you don't check them, you can kill the patient. And then the right evaluation. After you give the drug, what happened? You have to also document and then notify it. So here we are going to demonstrate how to give IV cannulation, as I said earlier. So I'll call my patient um, uh, Prince. The guy is sick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, we are going to administer IV medication for our patient. And then, I would like to invite some people on stage here. And then, as I am um, going through the steps, then they will be doing it. So, who will volunteer himself or herself to come on stage? Okay. Uh, I need like four or five people. Yeah, who can come again? I would love, love to. Okay. And, and who can avoid himself or herself for us to pierce through the skin? Okay, let's start for our sister. Yo, Ale, Ale, Ale. Okay. So we have one of them. So what we want to do is that I want us to, sorry, I want us to have like four tables, and then four different people are going to do the calculation. Then maybe we can all come around and surround the tables and as they are doing them, we all have a look at it and see how it is done. So four tables, four patients. And then maybe four four doctors. This is chair. Okay, yeah, yeah. We need a chair. The patient will sit down, so we need a chair. So for I think I think you must help them. They are not yeah, sitting we'll like uh <laughs> you are wind power help. <laughs> You can run it in the other I need it. Um, position is very well. Because we're going to switch. Linda.